In talking about great vision, there's something that you have to see. Jordan Searle is with us here in the studio. It's wonderful to have you here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, thanks. And basically, I got interested in what you guys do because I've known Ben Brown since he was a baby. And he is one of the pioneers of what you do. And the shots of you and him yeah. that I showed on this program a year ago won't be forgotten. Now, we've got them here. Tell us what's happening here, Jordan. Yeah, so uh, I sort of found myself in a precarious situation. Where were you? Uh, west coast of New Zealand, uh, the Kokotai River, and... This is pretty much as, as bad as it gets, to be honest. I, uh, you know, was leading these boys down one of my favourite rivers. We had a helicopter in there filming. You know, a lot of pressure situation. And uh, why is it a pressure situation with the chopper? Oh, in there? just just because the cost of things. You know, you got seven thousand dollars an hour buzzing above you, and we want to get things done quickly and as much footage as we can. And uh, sort of ended up, you know, in in this situation. And it was through the good work of my friends that they gave me the time to uh, get out of my kayak. Cause that's what I'm trying to do there. And uh, yeah, it took me a long time to get in my kayak and I was dealing with water all over me and, you know, pushing me under and, you know, I sort of reached back there and I'm just trying to clear clear my kayak and uh, making the decision to go down under these rocks. And uh, fortunately, after about 30, 35 seconds, I found my way out and, uh, you know, sort of through the hand of God, <laughs> made made it there and I sort of snap into, uh, snap to just here and sort of make, make it to the side. But, uh, yeah, the friends, my friends sort of made that happen, made me, you know, survive that serious situation, the worst sort of situation you can What we've experience. just seen is not in real time, and I want to emphasise that to you. What you've just seen does not include the 30 seconds when he is actually right under the rock and then you pop out. Yeah, yeah. Mate, did you think you were a goner? Um, I was just thinking how I can get home, eh? I was sort of just focusing on dealing with the situation and... Yeah, just, just, you know, conserve my energy, conserve my oxygen and, you know, just, just sort it out. Cause you know, you're in those sort of serious situations and you have, you know, close calls here and there and, and I knew this was, was you know, going to be my closest call hopefully and, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I could get Amazing through it. Amazing that it's on film and, and we can all see it. Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. your closest call? Uh, yes, yes it is right. definitely. Um, I had one other bad incident in California but other than that, it's, yeah, it's pretty rough. Now, then you only arrived back, and there was some footage shown on free-to-air television last night, and everybody's been talking about it. They only had about a minute 40. We're going to see a bit more than yeah. that tonight. And it's extraordinary footage. Tell us about your trip to Papua New Guinea. Yes, yeah, so uh, me and four friends from the South Island, Barney Young, Ari Walker and Matt Coles, were uh, fortunate enough to get a uh, Sport New Zealand Sir Edmund Hillary Adventure grant and uh, on the back of one that we got two years ago. And uh, we went back down to a uh, place called... The Chimbu province, and uh, we wanted to finish this river that we'd had an attempt on two and years that's ago. That's it, there, is it? Yep, that's it, there. You tried it two years ago and you couldn't do it. Yeah, we uh, we were just sort of ill prepared as we, we thought it had been done before, and uh, some information came to light from the locals about uh, a group in the 80s that were taken out, a rafting group that were carried out by the locals, and uh, so we had, we had to leave that day and we come back another time, well, and uh, said, our friend Barney was. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll unable, he got caught in a rapid and ended up having to uh, exit his kayak and we lost it, so we had to hike out of it again. So uh, with that thorn in our side, we sort of got well, the Well, look, it's a rough area. It's a terribly rough terrain, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is remote. Um, the jungle's terrifying. You don't, don't know what's in there, the wildlife and the plants. And, um, yeah, it, it, it is. M mate, let's not mess around with this. It's not them that I'm scared of. I've spoken to people who've been to Papua New Guinea and they reckon that you're lucky to get out if you go into the remote areas because the people, some of the people, well, they kill us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, I guess you know, that's that's the stereotype from a lot of the expats that have been over there. Yeah. Um, it's unfair in a lot Well, these ones don't look like killers. These look like good people. Yeah, no, they, 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 yeah, this is what we get, mate. You know, so this is the benefit that we have of how we travel, you know, grassroots well, travel. Well, why? Because you travel the way you do. What do you, what's different about the way you travel? We, uh, we're sitting on the back of a Hilux, pretty much, you know. We're, uh, we're cruising around, um, waving, and extending our hands to locals, you know, which is a big thing of trust for them. They hold have a long hold of the hand when they... Uh, Introduce ourselves. Yeah, this is how we get around. You're on, on that the whole time. Yep, that's how we are. We just sit out for the, for the world to see. There's no um, mesh cages covering the windows. There's no protective, you know, guard dog security or anything like that. We're just sort of out there as who, one of who them. Who told you that would work? Oh, intuition, I guess. Yeah. Um, 
I've always been a firm believer that if, if you put trust in someone, you know, they'll trust you. And that's the big thing in Papua New Guinea is they struggle to trust white men because, you know, since Australia have left, all they see is rich white people coming in and the armoured convoys and heading up into yeah, their compounds. And they've never really seen the sort of adventure recreation and, uh, and the fact that we're a Kiwi, you know, they, they love that. We even wrote it on the side of our truck just so, you know, half of them would read it before we even had to interact with them. So, uh, yeah. And, and on top of that, you had a local driving for you. Yep. Yeah, we had this uh, godsend called Tony and he, uh, yeah, we, we probably put him in a quite a lot of situations he'd rather not have been, but he, uh, he came through for us. He was always there. He made smart decisions for us. Um, Stopped us from making a lot of dumb decisions, I guess, you know, in terms of like discouraging us going to further in the Highlands after we finished the expedition. And um, yeah, he was the only local that we had with us full time. So yeah, he was a phenomenal asset to our expedition. Why these waters? How tough are they? Yeah, uh, class four, five. Which, now, what's that mean yeah, for it? To, 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 you know, well, there you go. This is, this is you know, serious white water. You know, there's risks right. everywhere. Um, Top end of whitewater kayaking, and, and at the same time, you've got to think about the isolation as well. You know, we don't have the safety net of of Western institutions and whatnot. So um, it's a top end. That's what we're after. Um, and also, you know, these specific waters because we, we didn't achieve it in the past, and we don't like to leave things undone. So we really wanted to get back in there and and sample everything that was there, and just um, you know, settle settle that sense of unfinished business. Yeah, it's, it's amazing stuff because there you are in the wop wops. Like it doesn't get any rougher than this, does it? Yeah. I can't think of anywhere else in the world where I would least like to be. Um, yeah, in, in well, hope, Syria wouldn't be. Yeah, a good well, place at the moment time. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, and, and that's what. But this is tough. This is tough. It is. It is. This is this is what we'd sort of like to change as well. You know, we'd like to show people, you know, about the uh, try and dispel some of these negative stereotypes about Papua New Guinea because. We've been there twice now, and other than a few little confrontations to do with money because they didn't understand what we're up to, we've had a phenomenal time. We've been, you know, received really well everywhere we've went, and um, yeah, I'd like to, you know, eventually encourage more people to go there, you know, within reason and with, you know, common sense. See, see these falls that you're coming down, these rapids that you're coming down. Is that as hard to come down as say a waterfall? Yeah, they are. They are like. What, why is that? Um, you know, the old waterfall's spectacular, but she's, you know, it's, it's sort of one little line that you get on and just fall, you know, and the height may be spectacular, but with these you're making multiple moves and you're dodging multiple hazards. And uh, so, like, the west coast of New Zealand is, is renowned for its, you know, hard white water, but we have very little waterfalls here as well. And um, I even had some friends come here from the United States where there's huge waterfalls, and, you know, one of them even went home because he found the white water in New Zealand too tough. And, and PNG... We thought we'd find waterfalls on both expeditions, and we and we still haven't. But in saying that, the white water has been as hard as I've paddled anywhere. So, yeah, it's, you're a Hokitika boy. Has that been a major advantage, and is that why you got started on this? Yeah, yeah, sort of born and bred. I'd have to uh, credit uh, a you know high school teacher of mine, Bruce Barnes, for getting me into it. And uh, I went away, moved to Christchurch, and and did one time at university. And now I've managed to get back there with the and uh, found a good job with uh, Westland Milk Products and they're the sort of people that have given me opportunities to go and do this. Who do you work for that gives you the opportunities? Uh, well, it's 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 a milk it's a milk products company uh, based out of Hokitika, and uh, my manager Sam Scott actually he he's pretty much into kayaking himself. I th he was a Hokitika guy, and uh, I think he his passion for it as well is sort of like. Give, help you know me sort of edge my way into getting a little bit of, little bit of help and you know just just time off. But uh, it's it's really. What's good. the name of the milk product? Yeah, Westland milk product. Westland yeah, milk product. It's the, uh, it used to be the Westland Dairy Co-op. And they look forever. after you, and they say, "Yep, off you go, Jordan." Yep, yep, they they really do, and uh, like the schedule's pretty good. Four days on, four days off is uh, it's pretty good. So uh, yeah. Well, let's look at this. See, the bit that I can't understand is you're up there in the wop wops. You don't know what's ahead of you. So. How much planning did you put into this? Um, we planned to get there and go down the river and get home. And we worked out the rest while we were there. So this is all by the seat of your pants, literally? Yep. Yeah, you sort of just... Uh... Where's the joker in the Hilux at this stage? Oh, he's, he's away now. He, uh, he'd only come back where the river intersects the, uh, the road. Um, but as we sort of go down, we just sort of... You, you can pick out a lot of what's happening on the water from, from sitting in your kayak. Uh, but then also sometimes you need to get out and, and inspect a series of rapids. Um, you know, the harder rapids, definitely, and you can, you know, identify risks and 
pick whether you want to fire it up or not. And uh, sometimes... What do you mean by fire it up? Oh, give it a go, you yeah. know, give it a crack. And um, then sometimes if, you know, there's a series of rapids that are too hard, you sort of get out and you've got to walk around. Um, as you can see, there's people there doing safety for me as I'm running a rapid, you know, taking photos, making sure we're OK. So, you know, to the people that just sort of see the spectacular little bits of footage, they don't see the stuff that's in behind it. The safety element, tell me about that. How important and, and how much time do you spend on that? Yeah, um, it's a very important thing for me. Like, uh, Too right, it's your life, mate. Yeah, it is, it is. Uh, well, you know, is so this an incident here? This is, this is an incident. This tell is me one, what's happening. This is the one incident of the trip. Ari sort of ends up offline and he's uh, now become sort of broached on rocks, pinned, we called it. And uh, So he's just trying to stabilise himself because he knows he can't get it out unaided. And uh, he's, he's waiting for uh, someone to get down and uh, help him out. He just blew his whistle, which alerts other people to what's going on. And then uh, he's just telling some locals here not to jump in because they were going to plan and help him, uh, jump in and help him. And we uh, don't want that to happen because there could be retaliation if something bad goes wrong. And uh, right here, that doesn't sound good, but uh, Barney is about to uh, pull Uri sort of out of this precarious situation on a throw bag. Um, What's a throw bag? It's, it's just a, it's exactly what it is. It's a bag of rope that you throw, yep. and uh, you can pull someone out. You know, if they're stuck or swimming, and uh, you know that was that was the uh, one sort of incident that we had on the trip. And you know, by sticking to our our processes, you know, we avoided anything worse by like Ari getting pushed underwater or you know him swimming into the rapids that were downstream that were quite full on. We hear a lot about team sports and. The All Black Pack talks about how it supports each other. Man, this is a different order yep, together. You yep. must know these blokes that were with you really well. Yeah. How yep. long have you been kayaking with them? Yep. So uh, me and Barney Young were sort of like the, uh, the sort of the heads behind the uh, the trip. We sort of kayaked together almost inseparably since oh, geez, seven years now, I guess. You know, right. we've done tours of the United States and every summer on the West Coast. And Ari and Matt sort of four or five New Zealand summers together and like every time I'm going to do a big hard trip on the West Coast, I'll give these boys a call because they're people that I trust, you know, like you say, my life with. And we've got a good core group of guys down in Hokitika that's sort of where, you know, a lot of guys congregate that are into this sort of stuff. And, you know, I'd trust any of them with my life and I'd like to think they'd do the same. So, you know, we get out there and get amongst it together and uh, try to keep it safe. How many people are doing this? How many New Zealanders? Like, I only know you and Ben Brown. Yeah. And, and, and I look at Ben and I know his mum and dad and I think, well, what are they going through? Do your mum and dad get worried about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, my mum actually offered to buy me a, a brand new car when I first got into the sport if I'd uh, stick to rugby league. I was, doing, <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I, was doing, I was doing pretty well at rugby league when I was a young fella and uh, she, she and honestly offered me that. Uh, but there's, there's, a, there's a big group of whitewater kayakers in New Zealand. Um, you know, it's not a, a sport that, you know, people talk about too much. You know, it's not too flashy or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a heap of us. And New Zealand's like an engine room for whitewater kayakers. It, it's that adventurous spirit that, that New Zealand has. Is it a buzz have. for you? Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd be lying to say it wasn't. It, it definitely is. Um, you know, you know, you look at going down something like this and you know there's a big lip coming along and you've got to stay on line. And you've got all these different hazards that you've been looking at. But once you sort of have laced, laced a line and... And you're at the bottom, and you look back and sort of what you achieved. It, it's 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 a pretty amazing feeling. It's it's about risk management and knowing your physical, and mental, you know, strengths and weaknesses. I guess it's 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 a pretty rewarding sport all over, to be honest. Yeah. So what's next for you? Um, oh, I'd like to go to Norway in a few weeks, but I don't think I'll be able to get the time off work. Uh, yeah, just sort of make my way through the winter if I can't get away, and then. You know, big New Zealand summer, and start planning for something. To, you know, mid next year when when it gets cold again. And you know, we'd like to maybe go back to Papua New Guinea in the future, but that's sort of something that's quite expensive. So you know, maybe next year we'll pick something. You know, in Africa or India or something like that, and then look to build towards another expedition in Papua New Guinea in two years' time. And is Sport New Zealand going to continue to support you? Are they getting mileage out of this? Um, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think I've, I've been a good, you know, our team has been a good investment for Sport New Zealand. Like, they're an amazing facility for adventure sports in New Zealand. And, uh, you know, just last night I was reading about the White, white Wave expedition and, and, you know, what those guys do as climbers. You know, I'm not into that. But, you know, it, it's really good to see that, you know, New Zealanders and adventure sports getting a good chance to be brought into, you know, the national stage, you know, on TV and things like that, because it's one of those sports that you don't hear too much yeah. about. You know about it, but, um, yeah. The Hillary Trust is tied in with Sport New Zealand, isn't it? Yep, yep. So the, uh, the Sir Edmund Hillary Adventure Grant is what it's termed, and Sport oh. New Zealand facilitate that. And, uh, 
yeah, I'll definitely be throwing my uh, name in the hat for the ne next funding round, and hopefully uh, I can I can write up something that's worthwhile. Well, for it's them. unbelievable what you do. I, I I still can't believe some of the footage that we've seen. And in fact, can you show us just again that first shot of him coming out of the rock? Because people will say, look, why didn't you show it again? And uh, if you could hook it up, it would be great. You know, unbelievable that. that. And uh, you know, most of us would think, well. I don't want to do this ever again. Here you go in there, and you're stuck there. Yeah. Water gushing into your into your mouth. If you, uh, I guess, I guess the thing is, is if see you... the rock is there. So this is not in real time. You go under that rock for how long? Uh, I think on the playback it was like 30, 35 seconds. And then you pop up the other and side. And then, but that was I was actually gone for that. I was, you know, I'm still struggling to get air here. But uh, I, I guess things like this is like people ask me, does it bother me to watch it? And the thing is, I've you know, with these sorts of sports, if you expose yourself to a certain amount of hazards for a certain amount of time, something bad's going to happen. You've just got to put yourself in the right position to be, you know, physically, immediately strong enough to deal with well, it. You've done all that. Congratulations on what has happened so far. We're very lucky to have you here. Yeah, thanks very much for that, mate.